The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys what it would be like if you tried to mirror something. So I'm going to try and mirror. And I'm going to mirror this whole thing around from here to here. You see how it goes at the angle that we have at our ISO snap? It really doesn't work very well when you're in ISO snap. So um, let's see if I can mirror it. And I take off ISO snap. I have to do that first. Take off ISO snap, which is right down on the bottom. And then I'm going to grab, I'm going to say mirror. And I could grab all these things. And mirror from here to here. That does work. So you cannot mirror in ISO snap. Okay, so I'm going to turn the ISO snap back on, and I'm going to put a fillet on here, and then I'm going to draw an ISO circle the way that we're going to need to do it, and I want you to see the difference. So if I put in a fillet with a radius of 1, and I selected these two edges. Mm. Fillet with a ra radius of 1. I didn't hit R. So I'm going to select these two edges, and it looks pretty good. But this is a way that we're going to need to do this. We're going to copy a line. And I'm going to copy it, toggling F5. I'm going to copy it down one because that's going to be the center of my radius. And I'm going to copy this line, toggling F5 from any point in space over one. Now if I draw an ellipse, so this is the first time we're drawing a circle, an ellipse. Now, right now, and you have to do this in this order. You have to come down, either hit I for ISO circle or click on this button. I, and it says specify the center. And then if I come up here, if I let it snap to here over here, it's if I let it snap to an intersection or something like that, I can come out and it says specify the radius. Well, my radius is supposed to be 1. wonder why this is not flush. This one is. This one didn't look like it got copied down correctly, did it? Let me copy that again. Yeah, you see this right here? It should have been right in line with that. So if ortho is off, it'll have your measurements be off. One. There we go. So now I'm going to move this from the center down to here. And you can see that that lines up. Now do you see the difference in these two? It's not a true elliptic arc when you use a fillet in this. So what I would do with this is I can delete these now that I don't need them and then I would trim this out. So I'm going to use trim, enter for select all and I'll trim these and then I'll trim the circle to it. Now if it's not touching like that, this one what it was not correct in the X either. So to make this correct, I'm going to offset this because my my ortho wasn't on. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to copy it over one. So just a little bit off. Doesn't look like it though, does it? Oh, here it is. I'm going to move this from here to here. Now I'm going to trim and delete this stuff. Select all and trim this and this. So if you, if you can't trim it, it's not touching. Something's going on. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. And now I can take this one and I can copy this from the front to the back, right? So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to copy it. And it's relative, you guys. I don't have to say a distance if I don't know it. If I can select on this endpoint that's on the front plane and select on this endpoint that's on the back plane, it does the same thing. So now I'm getting rid of this corner by putting that, making that rounded and now I can trim this out. So anytime you have a circle, or a radius. You're going to have to offset lines to find the centers. On a radius, you're just going to offset the radial value. And you're going to use an ISO circle in there, and then you're going to use that radius. So then if we wanted a chamfer, C-H-A, chamfer, and I want it to be an angle, and I'm going to have it be, let's say, now, if I use 45 degrees, that's essentially offsetting something the equidistant amount in the in two directions, right? 45 is going to be equidistant in the x and the y. So if I said uh, 1, 
and I select this and then the 45 degree angle and I select this one and this one. Does that look 45 degrees to you guys? It doesn't, does it? Now the other way that we can draw a chamfer though, CHA, is distance by distance. So let's see if we can do that. Distance, I'm going to have one by one. And I select these two. That looks better. Now let me do this other one. It's going to take away that entire step right there. So then I would have to add, I would have to stretch this line out to the end because there is an edge going to this angle and then draw another line right here for my angle. Now over here, let's try it the other way. So if we were going to do this in offsetting for inclined planes, if I said offset, I'm sorry, copy this line, I'm going to copy it both ways. I'm going to copy it down one and I'm going to copy it, hit F5, and I'm going to copy it back one. That looks exactly the same to me. So if I drew a line right now, and I drew it from right here, that's going to be exactly what that chamfer did. So you can use a chamfer if you use a distance times distance. So this is, I just wanted to check that. The way that we would complete this is, of course, we'll delete this out. But we're going to draw a line from line from here to here and from here to here and then we're going to trim it out so it seems that the chamfer command oh I can't I can trim those why is this not because that's all one line so distance by distance chamfer works but distance times angle does not anything with an angle is not going to work even if we want to draw an angle, we have to offset lines and figure out what the distance is. Okay, so on this, I'm going to draw an ellipse as an isocircle. Let's say we draw a, a hole right in the middle of this. This is one unit, and that's seven. So I'm going to I'm going to copy this back three to find the center of that. And then this overall was seven. So I'm going to copy one of these side ones over three and a half so that would be right in the center now this would be your ISO right because that would be looking at the right hand side of the part and if this is the front this would be your ISO left and then this would be ISO top so I'm going to draw an ellipse with an ISO circle and I'm going to select the center now I want you to notice that it is defaulting to a radius you guys be very careful if it defaults to a radius and you want a diameter, you can either type D or you can click on that button. Whatever is in blue, you can type it. D. And then the diameter could be 2. So that's how we would find the center of a circle. We have to offset two lines to get the center mark. If I wanted to make another ellipse, there's an ISO circle, and I want to put it on this side. That's a top, and if I toggle F5, there's the right-hand side. If I toggle F5 again, there's the left-hand side. So do you see how that actually changes the angle of the hole as well? So if I, this one is the one that looks pretty good to me, and then I would put the size in. So we can toggle that F5 to get our different angles. Now I'm going to draw something else real quick. I'm going to draw like a megaphone. So I'm going to draw an ellipse somewhere here. Um, uh oh, I forgot to say isocircle. Ellipse, I for isocircle. And then I'm going to select anywhere for the center. And I want to draw the top of a megaphone. So I'm going to go to that view right there. So I'm going to make this what? Three inches for a megaphone or two and a half. D for diameter, 2.5. And then I need this megaphone to be 18 inches. So I'm going to draw a line from the center. And I'm going to toggle F5 to go 18 inches. And then I'm going to draw another ellipse as an ISO circle at this being the center, toggling F5. And I'm going to make this, what, 18 inches in diameter. So I have to hit D first and then 18. Ooh. I bet that's an 18 radius. Okay. 
oh, it's that big. Okay, so now I'm going to draw a line, and I want to show you guys something that's kind of perturbing a little bit to me. Um, sometimes you'll be drawing to a quadrant, and sometimes you'll need a tangent. So I have a quadrant right here, and if I draw from that quadrant to this quadrant, I'm just going to take off ortho for right now. That doesn't look right on the bottom, does it? Does that look right to you guys? It should be blending back here, right? So this one went to a quadrant. Does that look right? So if I grab this and I drag this around, I can snap it to a tangent. That looks better. So sometimes you don't know if it's going to be a quadrant or a tangent. You just want to draw it, and then you can always move your ends to make it smooth out. 